So hi to everyone. My name is Daniel Ramirez, and well, my colleague Alexander Angtuk is on the first line. So this presentation uh, will be split in two parts. The first part will be about Android reverse engineering, and the second one about uh, some samples about Android malware that previous, uh, it was on the Google Play, but now they are removed from them. <coughs> so more or less, the agenda for this presentation is explain a little bit about uh, what is the, an APK and the different way that we can get this APK to start to work, uh, to do the reverse engineering process, then explain the uh, difference between the compile, the Android application, and disassembly, the, the application, then introduce a little bit about what is the SMALI files, and then um, some techniques about how we can mitigate the, the lack of uh, binary protection in our application, and then on the last part of the presentation, some malware analysis. So the, um, the an APK is like the previous talk, you said it's similar to the, it's like a zip, so inside the APK we can find the following uh, files. So uh, one of the most important files is the Android manifest.xml. Uh, that uh, during the um, developing of the application in in the Android Studio, for example, is just a, like a XML file w where there, um, you will define there all the permission that the application uh, need to uh, that, that that the application need to to use it. And then after it will be like a vanity file. Then the class.x that there is um, where all the Java source code are compiled in the Dalvik virtual machine. Then we've, we have the meta in folder that is where are stored the certificate of the application. Then the rest folder where you can find all the uh, resources that the application might need for, for work, like picture, sounds. Then the resources IRC, so the, the same resources that are in the folder but compiled. And then the lib folder that uh, when, for example, you are create an emulator on the Android uh, studio, so you, uh, you you can you are able to choose which processor you want on the emulator, like ARM or x86. So in this folder, you, you can uh, find the compiled uh, source code for the processor. So then, um, to start the reverse engineering process, we need uh, to get the APK to start to to work on it. So if we have an Android device, uh, we can install the, for example, these two tools, the APK Optic and the Astro File Manager, that uh, it will generate a backup of the application from on, on your device, and then you can, uh, with the, this APK, you can uh, work with the compile and disassembly. Also, we, we can use the, uh, the Android de debug reach to pull the APK from the device. And if we don't have any device, so we are using emulator for for the the testing, we can use a website that is called APK Pure. So basically, we need to go through the website of Google Play and copy the URL that uh, of the application that we want to download and paste on the APK Pure, and automatically we will have our our application ready for to start the reverse engineering. So then, uh, some difference about uh, the compiling and disassembly and APK. The compiler uh, basically is uh, we we have like um, the Java code of the application, like a reinterpretation of um, of the the source code of this application. So then, for us, it's easy uh, go through this Java code and read and understand what is the what are the, the, the application doing, and then we, we can look for do uh, function or method that we want to, to change for our own purpose. So then the disassembly, uh, it will be more to the low level, so we are getting the assembly code of this application. In other, in other way, we are getting the SMALI files. So in this SMALI file is uh, where we need to make all the, the changes that we, uh, we have to make the changes for our application to change the behavior. So then, uh, what question is why we have to make we have to disassemble the application and not the compile for for change the the, the behavior of the application? 
is um, basically because sometimes when you are the compiling the, the compiling the APK, there are some method that you cannot uh, decompile. So then it's easy to, if you want to change anything, so there are some, some function that you don't know what they are doing. So it's, and the way that you have to do this on the smiley files, so this is where you can modify anything, then recompile and install the, the application on your device. So for example, the, 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 the compile is when you are developing any Android application, uh, you have you, you start with your Java source code, then you use some Java compiler, you correct the jar, and then with, the, the, um, with some Darby virtual machine compiler, you create the, the text file. So there you have all the, the source code. So then we start having the text file in the APK. So then we need some Java decompiler to get the jar and then some, well, text to jar to get the jar file and then some decompiler to get the Java source code for, for the application. So then one tool that we can use for decompile, so go from text to jar, well, it's text to jar. So it's basically convert all the Darby uh, uh, bytecode into, into Java bytecode. So, uh, and with this tool and combining with GDGuy or Luiden, we can have the full process of the compiling. But, and one uh, thing that I want to focus that even both are Java the compiler, they produce different output. So, um, here uh, I will put the same uh, screenshot for uh, the compiling with GDGuy and Luiden. And uh, we can see in the method uh, game view, we have the arguments of the application, but w w we have boolean, param boolean one or um, param boolean two. So we exactly, we don't know w w what are these variable or for what uh, it's doing. But if we uh, the, uh, the compile the same application with written, we can see more uh, accurate output. So we, we know now the name of the boolean uh, the name of the variable, this boolean, force, uh, well, these two, and then we have more, uh, one method that the GD guy didn't detect, so we have more accurate uh, output of the application. So then for me, it's much better written that GD guy to understand what I the, ap the application is, is doing. So then the second point is disassembly the application. So it's, Basically, instead to go from Dex to the Java, uh, we are going from Dex to Smiley files. So, how I said previously, the Smiley file is the same as Java, but all the assembly code of the application. So then, for disassembling the application, we can use the APK, APK tool. So it will convert from the Darby uh, um, byte code into a Smiley source. So then, um, and this is because the Dex files are uh, unreadable, so we need somehow to transfer these um, files in somehow we, we can understand. We can understand. So this is how a, a smiley file looks like. It's similar to uh, a, a assembly code, and here is where we need to modify the, the application. So, uh, well, the links is, you cannot see very well, but for example, so, um, in these two links, you have all the uh, opcodes for the smiley files and for example if you, are, you have one application and you decompile and you know that you want to modify any condition so any conditional so you know that uh, for example this normal if into the assembly language it will be like this so then we only need for example to copy and paste this uh, if into uh, in our uh, smiley files and it will be uh, done this the this if then um, another thing that it's important in our process of reverse engineering is uh, saying the APK. So after we modify our application, we need to sign the APK because if not uh, on the device, you will not be able to uh, install it. So we can execute the, this uh, command using the sign apk.jar or if some of you use the app use, just clicking in recompile the application and automatically will uh, sign the, the application. So then, now I will show you all what I said previously, like a, a small demo. So I use for this demo a game, it's called Clumsy Bird, so I don't know if, if you know. So basically, it's, uh, well, you have like a, a bird, and 
the bird is flying over the, the, the screen, and you need to touch the screen to go up, and if you don't touch the screen, the bird goes down, so you need to avoid all the obstacles in the screen. So for this demo, I use the APK use. So when I upload the APK to this application and decompile it by using Luiten, after analyze uh, all the Java classes, I found on the bird.java that we have one method that if the bird hits something, it will be game over, and then the method pause. So then the, well, the trick here is put the game over on the pause. So then when the bird hits something, will not, uh, the game will not, game, uh, will not uh, over, and only will be over when you click the pause button. So uh, after we decompile the application, we uh, disassemble the application to get the smiley file. So we need to go to the same file that we found previously the same code, so bird.smiley. And we, we found the same method, public, bird hit, and the pause. So then we need to add the hash key before the sentence that it will be like a comment. It's like this, this sentence uh, will be uh, not counting on the application, and we will put on the uh, public pause method. So when you hit pause, the, the game they will over. So then the output of this application, well, this game using that is that actually the, the game, you can touch everything, so the game will not over. And yeah, when you hit the pause button, so the game will be over, and then you will have the, the score. So then uh, at this point, if we can read the source code of the application and modify the behavior, it means that it doesn't have enough binary protection because in theory we should not we shouldn't be able to read the, this, the source code or modify. So then, uh, for this reason, I will show some techniques to mitigate this lack of binary protection. So one of these um, well things is detect if the Android is rooted or not. So for, for this, we, we can check if we have the test key, so the raw.build tags on the source code, check if the device has a OTA certificate. So if we don't find this certificate on the device, means that they are using a custom uh, ROM, so it's a kind of, well, rooted device. Um, check for sev uh, several no rooted APK like uh, Android.su or check if they have some su binary on the application or query the su command and if we get like a zero as a zero as a uh, output so it means that the mobile is rooted. Uh, also we can um, like embed it in the source code the signature of the application so on the runtime the application will, will check the signature. So if it's the same, the application will, will launch. And if not, so that you, you will not be able to open the, the application. So here is a good way to use a, encrypt, a, a string encryption to the signature. Then one uh, good thing is uh, obfuscate your source code. And sometimes, um, the tool are able to encrypt uh, a string in your source code. So here is the, the most known uh, obfuscation tools. And down you have uh, two, uh, two links that explain how you can like decrypt uh, strings. So the, met the method one is th they, they create some uh, parser method. So you have to like upload w one smiley file by one, and they will try to uh, decrypt the, the string. And the second one, that this is uh, one month uh, old, so it's quite new. It's called Dex uh, Oracle. And basically, if, if, uh, if you put, I mean, uh, running the application, you send, you put like, an IPK, it will be disassembly the IPK, take all the smiley files, and then they will run over all the files three plugins. That one is for if you're using obfuscate, uh, obfuscation with Dex Protector. Then another one, if you, if you are using uh, some Java, well, Java encryption or common script encryption, so they will try to uh, run this plugin, find any pattern or, or the encrypted, encrypted string, and give like an output, uh, a clear output. So 
here is uh, what is the um, well source code uh, with the obfuscation. And after running the, these tools, we can see that everything that is decrypted. And so after the, the decrypt application, it will create the APK. So we can decompile and do all the reverse engineering process. A uh, different technique is that we can check if the application is running on the emulator device or not. So we, we can check by uh, if the hardware contains the, the goldfish or if you have the QA, uh, QEMU1, so it means that you have one device emulator and, and so on. So the application probably will not be open if you are used put this, this in the code. Or also, if you have the debuggable flag enabled, so if the application detects that you are trying to debug, so probably will stop. So then, for this um, demo, is how we can bypass the anti-emulator uh, detection in Android. So here we have in our device one application that we try to open, but we cannot because it's r running on an on a emulator device. So for uh, bypass this, uh, we decompile the application with Louis 10. And we see in this uh, part of the source code that on the on create, we have some here method for check if the application is running on the emulator device or not. So then we follow the same process as before, uh, the compile the application. We modify the, the smiley files with the hash key to um, remove this this uh, sentence, and then the final output will be like actually we can uh, open the, the application on a emulator device, so it's normal hello world. So for uh, recap, all of these well the first part the first part of the presentation is uh, we we have seen how we can. Mm, modify the behavior of the application by disassembly and modify the smiley code. And then some techniques to uh, try to prevent this lack of binary protection. So for well, the second part, I will talk about some malware in, in Android. So as well, you can see in, in the in this uh, uh, statistics graph, in 2011, they have like 126 on the first half, and then in the second half, almost 4,000 malware. So after year year, the malware uh, has increased. So in 2014, it's sorry, almost uh, 750,000 malware. So probably now in 2016 will be uh, more than than this. So it's something that is quite dangerous. So for this, um, well, for this malware, uh, all of these malware were on the Google Play, were uh, removed from from the Google Play. But now you can find it in some web websites. So I use it for purpose of this presentation. So this is like the game Flappy Bear, one variation. And here we can see that they are using some permission for sending SMS. So it's just a, a normal game, a normal game. And they are asking you to give permission to send SMS. So it's something that is suspicious because a game doesn't need to have this f uh, feature. So this is like the famous, the famous premium SMS. So in the background, they are sending SMS. And you have to, to pay for that, but you don't know. Then uh, another malware, so here is similar on the manifest. They are using for sending and receive SMS. So it's again, so there are permission that some application they don't need to to have. So here is um, some list of most permissions, the most dangerous permission that you can give to applications, since the internet, read the phone state, or write in the external storage your GPS position, then uh, call, uh, call in the phone, or record the audio, Send SMS. So, so then uh, an, another kind of well, malware is the, the dendrite botnet. So it's uh, basically if um, the botnet is for attacking an uh, well, Android user and can have all of these features if you are able to install this uh, the, this malware on the big team. So since record call, block SMS, take video photo, send message, record audio. 
So most, uh, many, many things. So this uh, dendrite botnet, it uh, looks like the uh, Adobe Flash. So for maybe m most people, they will think that it's nothing important because they can think that it's like in, in Windows, Adobe Flash, so they will th think it's, it's okay. So, but actually, uh, by installing this application, the person are giving you all of this permissi uh, permission in, in your phone. So it's basically like uh, full control. So then, um, now I want to show you how this Dendrite botnet uh, works. So a friend let me to install this uh, this botnet in his phone. So so we have here the control panel of the botnet. So here we have the two device. So then we select which device you want to work. And now we are trying to send this message from my friend phone to my phone using this uh, well, this interface. So this is my phone. So actually, we receive the message sending by by his phone to my phone, but using the the botnet. Also, another kind of malware is the Droid Dream. So this kind of malware basically are try to steal sensitive data from your phone, like the email, IMC, the device model, and etc. So for example, here is uh, another application that was in the market. It's, it's well, it's paying for draw something. But this application, they were asking you to give your GPS position and read the phone state. So well, I don't know if you, you can see very well, but here is uh, recollect all the information from your phone and get ready to send it to the, to the attacker. Um, here is. Well, the same is uh, another application, but also with the Do Droid Dream uh, malware. So they are trying to get the phone state and internet and read the phone state. So it's the same that some application they have more permission that they need. So sometimes can it's uh, malware. And I think th uh, this is the last malware that I will present today. And it's about the GM botnet. So it's for display display uh, phishing page on the banking application. So they have similar um, similar features than the previous botnet, but also they have the, the ability to wipe your device uh, storage so completely. And well, here we, uh, we can see all the uh, permissions that you are giving uh, to the application, like in the previous botnet. But then one maybe funny thing of this uh, botnet is it will only affect you if you are not Russian. So on the application, they are checking if the, let's say the language of your application is Cyrillic, uh, then the application will not do anything. If you are not Russian, then the application will uh, infect you. So. Then uh, how we can, let's say, protect this, so maybe <laughs> don't buy Android unless you are Russian, but joking. So um, turn off uh, the allow installation from unsecure uh, unknown source. Then regarding the offset permission, it's depend of the Android version, because I think in the Android 6.0, uh, 6 all the permissions are in runtime, like in iOS. So when you open the application, they are asking you if you want to uh, open, uh, give this permission or not, and under maybe like 442, before when you are installing the application, you have like a pop up and they are asking you, do, do, do you want to give all of this per permission to the application? So maybe now it is much uh, better than before. So never open any attachment from unknown sources and also never click on any link or SMS from that someone can send you to your phone. So I don't know if someone has any questions. Mm -hmm. 